Hello YouTube, I'm Pedro from the Wicked Cat team. On the last video we keep working with the standard shader and I show you guys how to create height maps and apply them to your materials. Today we are going to continue to explore the standard shader of Unity 5. If you enjoyed this video remember to leave a like and if you want more Unity 5 tutorials remember to subscribe to our channel. So we already covered the most important maps that you can use with the standard shader. So on this video we will quickly cover the remaining maps. So picking up where you left off, let me just select a material right here. The next parameter that we are actually going to talk about is the occlusion map. This type of maps give information about which areas of the model should receive high or low indirect lightning. These maps are, and are normally generated by third-party applications that can calculate the light, how the light should affect the 3D models. Uh, so the occlusion map is actually a grayscale image very similar to the high map. However, on the occlusion the white values indicate the areas that should receive full indirect lightning, while the black areas indicate the areas that should receive no indirect lightning. So I actually have an occlusion map for you guys, let me just select, we are going to apply the occlusion map to our wheels, because of our tires are made of rubber and they are actually too shiny. So we are, what we are actually going to do is to apply an occlusion map to, to our material. So I'm actually going to textures and I have the occlusion map right here. I will drag it over the material. And as you guys can see, I now have a very much more realistic look on the on the wheels. You can also change how the occlusion map is actually affecting the material using the slide over here, or you can type a number. Let's just have full um, full strength, so value one. Okay, if I select it here, you guys can see that the occlusion map in this case is a um, almost a solid grey color since you are actually talking about a, a rubber material alright so moving on the next um, parameter that we actually have is the emission map we already talked about this when we covered light in unity 5 so I'm going to be, be very brief here these maps control the intensity of the light emitted from the surface of the material. So, when you use an emissive material, the object will appear self-illuminated. So, as previous, I already have an um, uh, emission material to be used in our models, in our model here. So, this one is the material I'm going to apply here. And as you guys can see, once I apply it to our, to our, once I apply the map to our material, this area here will start, it will start to shine, giving that glow that we, we actually want. So what we can actually do now is change the color of the light being emitted. So for example, I want it to be a little bit more blue like this for example let me just copy this value here and I can also change the strength of how this is actually affecting the of how the strength of the of the light so you can do it by going here where you can select the value for the strength for example 2 or you can do it whoops not what I intended to do actually let me just paste it here, alright, um, or you can actually do it here on current brightness, you can set it to 2, and here we we'll have the value 2 as well. So two ways of doing that, let's repeat the process for to our other material, this one here, the front part of our truck, let me go to textures and here we have it, let me apply the emission map, let's give it a color here and set the brightness to 2, ok. 
so yeah our model is actually looking quite fine right now so as for this model I would say that we are done with materials however as you guys can see we still have uh, several fields to cover so I'm going to talk about them really quickly but before that actually uh, I forgot we actually have the global illumination parameter right here once we apply the emission map so if you click here we have three options none real time or baked with real time selected by default so this is chooses how the emissive, the emissive material the light of the emissive material affects the objects around it so if we actually select none the object will appear emissive but the light of nearby objects but lightning will not affect um, nearby objects however if we actually select bake it what will happen is that uh, the light will affect uh, static objects since the light will be baked into light maps however this means that no, di that no dynamic objects will be affected by dynamic objects I'm actually talking about the player or the car or anything that needs to be um, moving right so only static objects will be affected by this light however if we actually have real time all objects will be affected by the emissive light so let's just leave this as default and now we actually go to, to the final parameters of the standard shader which are the detail max and the secondary maps so the detail mask right here makes it possible to mask certain areas of your model so this means that you can show the detail texture in certain areas and hide it on others as for the secondary maps they allow you to overlay a second set of textures over the main textures listed above you can apply an albedo or a normal map or second normal map this can be quite useful if you are trying to add detail for example to the skin of a character like adding pores or hair so yeah, the basic idea here is that you use the main maps to give the main main details of the skin and those smaller details we actually apply them using the secondary maps so okay guys this is you now have fully covered the standard shader with the metallic approach in unity 5 on the next video i'm going to show you guys the difference between the metallic approach and the specular approach Hope you guys enjoyed it, until the next video and have a nice day.